Okay, what we're going to take a look at now is posting the data to the server so that when we edit an activity, we actually persist this change rather than lose it every time that we refresh our page. So we'll head back to VS Code and once again, we'll head back to the agent.ts file. And at the moment, we've just got a single request for our activities here to list the activities. So let's complete the other operations we're going to need inside here. We're going to need a request to get the activity details. We're not actually going to use it for a little while because we can just fetch the activity we we're interested in from the list that's already returned from the API. But we will need to use this when we bring in routing. So this is going to take an ID of the string. And then we'll say requests.get. And this is going to return a single activity. And we'll use the template string type here and we'll say activities in backticks and then forward slash and then we can say dollar and then pass in the ID and then we'll add a request to create an activity and this is going to take an activity as a parameter of type activity and we'll say axios dot post and we'll say in quotes forward slash activities and then we'll add the activity as the body of the request, what we're sending up. Then we'll add the update request. And once again, this is going to take an activity of type activity. And we'll say axios.put in this case. And then we'll use the template literal again. And we'll say with backticks, activities, forward slash, and then dollar. And we'll take the activity dot ID and then we'll pass up the activity and we'll also just add the delete as well which is going to take an ID of type string and we'll say axios dot delete and we'll use the template literal again and we'll say activities forward slash and then dollar ID to go ahead and delete the activity now we can add type parameters to these as well, but typically on the commands that we're sending up to our activity, we're going to return void. We're not actually going to get anything back that we're going to use from these responses. Everything that we do is going to be on the client side to update the user interface. And then of course, when we refresh or we load our application, we're going to pull the data down from our API. So now let's head over to the app.tsx so that we can update the handle create or edit activity function. And what we'll also do is add another piece of state so that we can see if we're submitting in this case. So we'll say const and submitting, and we'll say set submitting. And we'll say this is equal to use state, and we'll set it to false initially. And inside the handle create or edit activity, what we'll do, or the first thing we'll do is set the submitting status to true so that we can start our loading indicators. And then what we'll do, we'll first of all, we'll wrap this in an if statement. So we'll see if we've got an activity ID rather than using a ternary here. And then we'll say agent.activities and we'll say update if we do have an activity ID and we'll pass the activity. And then we'll use the len. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll just copy what we had down here to set the activities. And then we'll make sure that we set the selected activity to the activity. And we'll set the edit mode to false. And we'll set submitting to false as well. And we'll add an else statement. And what we'll do here, we'll just set the activity ID equal to UUID in this case. And then we'll say agent.activities.create and we'll pass the activity up and then we'll use len and we'll do effectively the same thing we did before. We're going to set our activities. So I'll just copy this line but we don't need to use the UUID inside here. We can simply just pass in the activity because we're doing this setting of the ID above here. And the rest of it, I'm just going to copy and paste from above. And we don't need the extra closing parentheses there. And I'm just going to remove the code that we have here because we're handling everything else 
inside this if statement now. So what we need to do is pass down the submitting flag to our activity form so that we can set a loading indicator inside there. So once again, we're going to need to pass something down to our activity dashboard. So I'm going to say submitting equals submitting. And then we can head to our activity dashboard. So just put your cursor inside here and then press F12. And we'll add the submitting inside our props here as well. And this, of course, is going to be a type of Boolean. And then we can pass that down to our activity form. And let's just tidy things up in here. And we'll say submitting equals submitting. But of course we need to destructure this as well. So let's just, this is getting very, very busy up here. And when we look at adding our state management solution, then this is going to be a lot cleaner. But for now, we still need to add our props to our destructured props up here. And then we can pass down the submitting. And finally, we can go across to our activity form. And once again, we'll say submitting of type Boolean. And then we can destructure this inside here as well. So I'll say submitting. And then what we can do inside the button here, each Semantic UI component or many of the components inside Semantic UI will take a loading indicator as well. And we can specify loading and we can set this equal to submitting. And what we can do then is test our functionality. So let's go across to the browser once again. I'll just refresh the page. And let's start off to make sure that we can edit an activity. So I'll click on edit. And let's just change the title once again. And I'll change it to past activity 11. And click on submit. We see the loading indicator. We get taken to the detailed view of the activity. And what we should find is that the activity is updated inside here as well. But what we should also find now, if we refresh the page, that our activity update has persisted and we now update that on the server as well. So let's just test creating a new activity. So I'll just call it new activity test and just give it some basic information and set the category equal to music and we can select a date using this date picker. If you're using another browser other than Chrome, then you may have a different experience with the date picker here. Not every browser manufacturer implements the HTML date inputs and they typically do it in a different way. We will fix this later, but we're not going to worry about it for now. And I'll just add a couple of values in for the test there as well. And if we click submit, we get our new activity created. It should appear in the list. And if we refresh the page, then we should see this in our list and we do and we can go ahead and view this activity and it pops up on the right hand side. Excellent. And what we'll take a look at next is persisting the deletion of activities.